Good evening, everyone. I'm Greg Gumbel. Welcome to our New York studios in the NCAA Basketball Championship Selection Show. Tonight, CBS Sports begins its 28th consecutive year covering March Madness. From the first tip of the first round games all the way to the trophy presentation, CBS is your exclusive home for the NCAA Basketball Tournament. Now, just a short while ago, the chair, Mike Slive, and the Division I Men's Basketball Committee adjourned after finishing up this year's tournament brackets. And now it is time to reveal the overall number one seed in the tournament, the Louisville Cardinals. The second time they've been a number one seed in school history. The last time was in 1983. You'll recall they knocked off number one Pittsburgh back in mid-January. The Louisville Cardinals, the overall number one seed in this year's NCAA tournament. I'm joined by my studio 43 partners, Greg Anthony and Seth Davis. You're going to quarrel with that decision? Not at all. In a year where the Big East was arguably the best conference ever, they won not only the regular season, but the conference tournament. I think you have to look at them legitimately as being the number one seed. Yeah, of the three teams from the Big East vying for number one seed. I thought Louisville was third going into the Big East tournament. The fact that they won it, no-brainer. And the fact is, too, that a week ago, we weren't even talking about Louisville on the top line at all. Here they are, the number one overall seed. One team down, 64 more to go. Coming up, we'll bring you the exclusive live announcement of the seedings and pairings for the 2009 NCAA tournament. Our experts will review the field, offer their predictions. Plus, we will talk live with the selection committee chair, Mike Slive. First, though, here's how the tournament is set up. 65 available tournament bids, 31 of those automatically to conference champions. That leaves 34 at-large bids. Now, the brackets are arranged according to how the committee has ranked those four number one teams. This would set up a potential final four where the overall number one would play the fourth number one seed, while the second and third number one seeds would play each other. And as we said, the number one overall seed is Louisville. And now we can tell you the Cardinals will be headed to the Midwest region. That is probably the place where, if you give Rick Pitino a choice, that's exactly where he wants to go. Rick Pitino. Now, the second number one seed is Pittsburgh, and the Panthers will play in the East region. The East region, as the Panthers get their first ever number one seed. The North Carolina Tar Heels are the third number one seed. They are playing in the South. 13th time that Carolina has been a number one seed. That is the most in NCAA history. And the fourth number one seed and the third team out of the Big East is UConn. And the Huskies will be playing in the West region. The number four seed overall, UConn, well, ranked number one this season twice. Meanwhile, the Pitt Panthers, Jamie Dixon saying a short while ago, eh, we don't care where we go as long as we're going. They're going and they're going to be in the East. Now, here's how the regions shape up based upon where the four number one seeds have been assigned. The winner of the Midwest region meets the winner of the West region in one national semifinal game. The other semi will put the winner of the East region against the winner of the South region. And you will see those games from Detroit on Final Four Saturday. That's April the 4th, 6 Eastern time here on CBS. And then on Monday night, April the 6th, CBS Sports will present the national championship game at 9 o'clock Eastern time. Those number one seeds, they are now etched in stone. What do you think? Well, I'm impressed. I think all teams are very deserving. I think Pitt is a team as a number one seed. I think will benefit by losing early in the Big East Conference tournament simply because, again, they had injuries. I think it allows them time to prepare to make that run deep into the tournament, something they haven't been able to do under Jamie Dixon. Hey, all credit to Memphis. They had an unbelievable season. The bottom line is Memphis simply did not have the profile for number one seed. They had four wins uh, against teams ranked in the top 50 of the RPI, and UConn, based on their body of work, uh, they had a lot of common opponents, but you know, two of UConn's four losses were against Pittsburgh. It was a hard call, I'm sure. I think the committee did the right thing and making UConn a number one seed over Memphis. I think UConn is deserving. I think the committee looked at the body of work as opposed to what they maybe project out because I don't think there's any question that not having Jerome Dice is going to be a big factor for UConn in terms of whether or not they can win a national championship. He is a valuable commodity on that team. All right, right now let's go down to Indianapolis, bring in Jim Nance and Clark Kellogg. They just called the Big Ten championship game, and if I'm not mistaken, our friend Clark was looking at Memphis on that top line, right? 
<laughs> yeah, what yeah. about that, Clark? Well, I looked at them, but again, yeah. I thought there were five teams, Jim, that were worthy of strong consideration for number one. Not a big difference between number one and number two in my mind. In North Carolina being the overall number three in the tournament, I think a lot of people thought Carolina might be the number one seed for the tournament. Well, I think the question mark with Ty Lawson and how healthy is he going to be come tournament time may have factored into the committee's decision there. What do you make out of Louisville after its run, not only winning the regular season in the Big East, but then winning the tournament, being the number one seed of the overall tournament? Well, I can understand it because the body of work indicated that Louisville's there. And then you cannot discount winning the toughest conference, in my opinion, during the regular season, and then also winning that conference tournament the way Louisville did. So I can understand where the committee went there. All right, partner. I know one thing. Connecticut must be rejoicing all this talk about going west, both of their championships, 99 and 2004, right. they came out of the west, so Jim Calhoun probably loves it. Let's go back to you, Greg. Huge smile on Coach Calhoun's face. Jim and Clark, thanks. We'll see you a bit later in the show for your thoughts on the whole bracket. We remind you that NCAA March Madness on Demand is back with a new high-quality video option. Every game from the first round through the championship will be available live, online, and for free. You can find out more at NCAA.com.